And now, suspense. Your host tonight on the Autolite Theater is the maker of the famous wide gap Autolite resistor spark plug. The spark plug that's ignition engineered by Autolite men who make complete ignition systems for many of America's finest cars. Autolite makes over 400 products for cars and trucks. Spark plugs, bumpers, hubcaps, headlights, radiator drills, batteries, wire and cable, ignition systems, speedometers, instruments, taillights, and many more. So remember, from bumper to headlight, you're always right with Autolite. and its 60,000 dealers and service stations everywhere present the famous suspense story of the supernatural. to the door. Maybe some poor wayfarer. Could you put us up for the night? Larry, sir, the, the house is full up. But my wife's in the car and she's quite ill. We've been driving for miles and miles over these blasted moors. Sorry, sir. But you can't be full up. Why, the house looks empty. That's right, sir. We're full up. And close. But we really don't need a bed. We, we will sit by the fire all night. Anything to take my wife out of this misty night. Twelve miles on, so you'll find a farmhouse. Sometimes they take folks in. Good night, sir. But you're, you're, a, you're a tavern. You're a public inn. I can tell from the looks of you, you're practically empty. Sorry, sir. A certain party has taken this pub over. Entire and complete. As long as they pay for it, what they do is their own business. What I do is my own. Just good night, sir. How much longer are you keeping us here for, Cop? He won't tell you. Never know a thing with the talk. He's a quiet one. How long did you rent this here pub for? Your turn, Albert. Will that be all for tonight, then, sir? It's late, you know. You can leave out three meat pies and two bottles of claret. Yes, sir. And whiskey. They're all on the dresser. Good night, sir. Wait. You're the only one sleeping in now? I... You sleep alone in the garret, do you? I do. Well, I hope you sleep well tonight. And if you should hear anything irregular, don't feel you have a duty to get up and investigate. Oh, no, sir, I won't. Indeed, I won't. What's the idea, Tom? What are you up to, anyway? Never tell us, would you, Tom? Oh, he's a clever one, mates. And you and me. Why, who are we? Just three blooming idiots. Am I right, Tom? That's right, Sniggers. Three idiots, sailors. Lost on the blasted moor. 
I tell you this, though, we may be three bloody merchant seamen to you, but there's one thing I've learned. What's that, Sniggers? Yes, sir. I've been sailing from Cape to Cape and in all the rich corners of India. And there's one thing I've learned. I'm waiting. It's the clever ones, talk. The clever ones as makes a mud. Ah, oh, he's right. It's the clever ones that keeps everything to themselves. <laughs> Their plans are clever enough, but they don't work. They don't work. Cause they forget some one little thing that simple fools like us could see. Tell us, Toph. Tell us what your plans are. Aren't you the clever ones, though? I know what he's keeping us here for. So they can't find us. Ah, but I'm sick of it. How can they find us? They're nothing but three havens. Uh, Who's afraid of three havens, eh, Snickers? We can't keep hiding forever. And then running and hiding and running forever. The old black world over. Remember that first night in Bombay? Aye, that was the top's mistake then. He was clever, all right. He was so clever, he let some follow us right onto the boat. That's where the old trouble started. Uh. If them three heathens hadn't followed us onto that boat, we might have had our little trophy sold by now. Aye. Am I right, Snickers? Sold and the money divided between us, like we always say. Aye. Aye. How much do you figure that ruby's worth? Any price. How much is any price? Any price we ask. That's how much the ruby will bring. Oh, and here we sit on the misty moors. Of course, you can't ever let on with the temple, ruby. Folks is superstitious. Aye. And no matter how big it is, if people knew we stole that ruby from a temple, right out of the bleeding idol's eye. That's right. They'd never touch it. Why? Hmm? It's still a ruby, ain't it? Yes. But it's a temple ruby from Hindustan. And that's what makes the difference. Did you hear steps? I heard something outside. It wasn't steps exactly. Wind. That's all wind. Wind? Foggy night. What'd you say, mates? Let's eat them meat pies and drink that claret and that whiskey. <laughs> now, when you look who's in a panic now, huh? <laughs> now, but you've seen them three evens. That makes a difference, and so is Snickers, but not me. Every time I use a noise and every time look I... Look at here, Bill. It don't do no good to go looking and listening. Because when they come, they come from behind. And they come without a sound. Like they did to poor old Jim and Malta. That's right. Like they did to George and Bombay. Before we start. Oh, easy, easy, easy now, Bill. We're safe out here. I give them dark devils the slip. You give him a slip? Aye. <laughs> Put a stick in the fire, Albert. Right in the place up a oh, bit. I had the ruby, and I give him the slip. All oh, three of them. <laughs> How'd you ever do it? Well, oh, they were following me. Who told them you had the ruby? You didn't sell it. You didn't have to. They kind of know. Oh. They kind of know? Yes. They know if you've got it. They always know. That's the mystery we was trying to tell you about. Here they are now, following me down the streets of Ireland. I goes up to a policeman and I tells him, and he says, oh, they're nothing but three Hindus and they won't hurt me. Why don't you have the policeman arrest ah, them? For what? For trying to get back the ruby we stole? All right, so I walk slow. Then I turns a corner, then I runs. I never sees a corner, but I turns it. And I never turns a corner, but I runs. And you know the streets of all. Well, after two hours, I sits and I waits. I waits. And what do you think? What? No priests. What? No. No dark devils with gold spots on their faces. <laughs> I give them the slip. Well done, right. Albert. That's why I didn't jump when you said you thought you heard something. Because I knew we were safe. Now, come on, Bill, and play up. Play up. Whose turn is it anyhow? Mine. <laughs> Albert, why didn't you tell us before? So of these are mine. Because the top, he don't want me to say nothing. No. He's got his plans and things must be done his way. Oh, uh, you and me are stupid fools. And if it wasn't for me, we're getting the slip and all, we might have had one of them crooked knives in him right now. But for me, we'll give him the slip. <laughs> Albert, Bill, here's the idea. Mm. The priests have gone, our money's gone. Right. So what have we left? Go on to London now and send that ruby. Toffee won't come. We'll leave. They won't give us the ruby. We'll take it. You... Oh. There's one of them. There's three of us. We'll take it tonight and be in London tomorrow. <laughs> Simple enough, ain't it, Bill? Simple enough. 
once we get the ruby. Don't worry about that. We'll find a way to get it from him. Goodbye, old man. We'll see that you get your fair share. But there's nothing to do here. No girls. No dance halls. We must sell that ruby. I'm not a fool, Bill. Oh, Bill. Oh, of course not. Of course you ain't. And you've got this a lot. Well, goodbye, old man. You say goodbye? Of course. Goodbye. And open the shutters again, Bill. I don't suppose you want the door open too, do you? Whether the door is open or closed, Bill, it doesn't matter. Well, the first shall be lost and the last shall be first. second act of Lord Dunzany's famous story of the supernatural, A Night at an Inn, starring Boris Karloff. While we're waiting for the curtain to go up, I'd like to tell you a little story about an amusing incident that happened recently. It seems that one of our local luminaries, Marvin, the mystical magician, had gotten himself all dooted up for a big appearance over on the other side of town. Now, this Marvin was smooth all right, but you couldn't say the same for his car. It was missing and bucking like the Indian rope trick gone wrong. Well, our friend Marvin did his darndest. He took a deep breath, leaned back, and cut loose with a real powerhouse spell. Marvin could make elephants vanish and a whole stage full of people disappear, but he couldn't get rid of that engine miss. Well, now, naturally, no one like Marvin, who is supposed to be a prominent prestidigitator, likes to have people know that he's lost his powers. So our friend Marvin came in for some real Autolite magic. What he got wasn't really magic. It was a combination of Autolite service and Autolite ignition engineering know-how. Well, his case was very simple. It was a case of old, worn-out spark plugs. So, without any abracadabra, we replaced those old plugs with some really new, wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. No, sir, it's not magic that makes the Autolite resistor spark plugs the wonders that they are. It's ignition engineering. The years of research by Autolite engineers that developed the sensational new resistor that's built into all Autolite resistor spark plugs. Remember that resistor. It isn't magic either, but you'll think it is when you see how its low rate of electrode erosion permits a wide initial spark gap setting. You see, it's the wide spark gap that permits you to use a leaner gas mixture, and that means actual gas savings for you. Not only that, the resistor that permits that wide gap setting helps you get a smoother idle, too and increases electrode life 200% and more. Also, those Autolite resistor plugs cut down on radio and television interference. Yes, it's the resistor that does that too. Well, Marvin drove out of here as smooth and slick as pulling a rabbit from a hat as soon as we equipped his car with Autolite resistor spark plugs. So take a tip from Marvin and replace your old worn out narrow gap type spark plugs with a set of those sensational new Autolite resistor spark plugs. Remember from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Now here is the second act of A Night at an Inn. Nice. 
So you are. How did they get here? How did they get here, Tom? They walked, of course. But it's 80 miles from here to all. There's a number of here, Tom. Expected them about now. 80 miles. What are we to do, Toffy? Ask Albert. Oh, if they can do things like this, there's no one can help us but you, Toff. I always knew you was a clever one. We won't be fools no more. We'll obey you. You're strong enough and you're brave enough. And not many would steal a ruby eye from out an idol's head. And from such an idol as that was to look at, and on such a night, too. You're brave enough, Bill, but you're all three of you fools. Jim would have none of my plans, and where's Jim? And George, what did they do to him? Don't stop it, George. So your strength is no good to you. You need cleverness. Or they'll have you the way they had Jim and George. Oh, we know, we know. Those black priests will follow you around the world in circles, year after year, until they get the ruby eye. And if we die with it, they'll follow our grandchildren. And this fool thinks he can escape from men like that by running round three streets in the town of Harlem. Oh, it's true. You haven't escaped them because they're here. So I suppose. You suppose? I took this place especially to receive them. Well, you're a deep one. I saw something just then. And we better shut the shutters. Don't shut the shutters. But, Toffee, they can see us. One doesn't let the enemy do that. I don't see why... No, we... of course you don't. No revolvers now. But why not, Toffee? I don't want any noise at my party. We might have guests who haven't been invited, but knives are a different matter. I think they're coming now, Toffee. Not yet. But when will they come? When I'm quite ready to receive them. What do you do when they come? I shall do nothing. What? They'll creep up behind me. And then my three faithful friends, Sniggers and Bill and Albert, will do what they can. You can trust us, Toff. If you're a little late or slow, you'll see reenacted the cheerful spectacle that accompanied the death of Jim in Malta. Don't stop me. there, all, all right. right. Now, I shall sit here... My back to that door. Now, you three go out, one by one. Mind now, be sure you cross that open window so they'll think you've gone to the other room. I get it, Toffee. Then, crouch low, creep back so that you'll be hiding here when I need you. Night, Toffee. Good uh, night, Toffee. Good night, Toff. Turn out the lights. I think the firelight will prove more inviting. No revolvers now. The police in Yorkshire are proverbially inquisitive. We do. Only one? Yes. Very well. You shall now witness my demise at my Yorkshire residence. I shall be night, and you'll be ready to receive guests.
too, Toffy. What do we do now? Still enough. Yes. Albert, you get over to the window. Stage a fight with that heaver. Oh, but... I know, I know he's dead. But you and Bill are going to resuscitate him. On his feet. Snickers, help him. Keep low, keep low. Up to the window. Quick now, quick. Good night's work, my friend. Well done, Toffer. You are a dick. Oh, uh, you don't want a terrible odd one. How much is it worth, Toffee? Everything they have in the shop. I'm sure we all ought to be very grateful to Toffee. Well, I just have a knack of foreseeing things. <laughs> <laughs> I should think you did. I don't suppose there's anything happens that old Toffee don't foresee. Does it, Toffee? No, I don't think it does, Bill. I don't really think it does. Turn on the lights. What do I do with them? Bury him in the garden. Then what? Then we go up to London and upset the ruby. <laughs> well, I think, I think we've come through this night's work very well. Well, the first thing we have to do uh, is give a little supper in honor of old Toppy. Oh, oh, well, I think we've earned our bit of supper. Here's the Toppy. Oh, who gets everything right? All right, good old Toppy. Oh, well, here's the Toppy who saved our lives. Here, here, he foresees everything. <laughs> Speech, Tom. Well, gentlemen, I suppose in this world there are two kinds of men. There's the kind that can see. Well, what would that be? No wind and a shot of salmon. It's wind. It's blowing both ways at once. Look. Look at that. Of course it's the wind. Fog's lifting. Must be lifting. Must be the wind. Fog looks as thick as ever to me. Sniggers, go outside and fasten that shutter back. Go outside. Well, gentlemen, as I was saying, in this world there are two kinds of men. Those who can see and those who can foresee. Now the advantage of being able to foresee... Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> I've been thinking about my share in that ruby. I don't want it, Toffee. I don't want it. Nonsense, Sniggers. Nonsense. You, you should have it, Toffee. You should have it yourself. Only say Sniggers has no share in this here ruby. Say it, Toffee. Say it. Want to turn informer, Sniggers? Stop it. Take back my share, Toffee. Take it back. What do you mean? What are you driving at? I, uh, I think I, uh, I saw something. I saw something that I didn't like. What didn't you like? Toffy, take back my chair. Please take it, Toffy. What have you seen? The idol. I've seen a big the idol. You couldn't have. Take back my... He's blind. He's groping. He wants that ruby eye back. Then give it back, Toffy. Please, Toffy, please give it back to him. I dare you, Toffy. Put that ruby in the window and you'll see it. That's what he wants. That's what he's looking for. That's what he must have.
that obscene idol come from India. It's taken its eye. We're safe. Safe. Mr. William Jones, evil seaman. Albert. Albert, what is it? did not foresee. Thank you, Boris Karloff, for a fine performance. Musical effects this evening were by Hank Silburn. And now this is Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite, inviting you to join us next week for Suspense and reminding you that you're always right with Autolite. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.